Hey guys, Bud here with another tutorial from premiumbeat.com. Today we're going to be talking about proxy workflow, specifically how we can get our proxies from DaVinci Resolve, add a little color to them, sync them up with our recorded audio, and shoot them out as MXFs for immediate editing into Avid Media Composer. <music> going to be using DaVinci Resolve to create master clips. These proxy clips are going to be the MXF OP Atom codec, which means that we can take them right into Avid without having to consolidate or transcode our media. So after you have at least one backup of your raw files, you can then go ahead and start creating your proxies, which is what we're going to do right now. So let's get to it. Now, before we even bring in our raw media, I'm going to hit Shift 9 and uh, that's going to bring up Resolve's project settings window. I'm going to navigate to general options and under conform options here I'm going to want to make sure and this is very important to check the boxes um, assist using real names from the source clip file name. What, what this basically does is uh, when it's time to, to conform the media back and uh, use the raw files to do so, um, this is going to help in that, in that relink process. And I'm going to hit save. I'm going to navigate to my first day's footage uh, in this particular project. I just got one day's worth of footage. And I'm going to right click on that folder. And I'm going to select from the drop down menu, I'm going to select add folders and subfolders in the media pool. And then create bins. And all this is really doing is it's it's preserving that file structure and treating the, treating treating those folders as bins. So as you can see, I have my sound folder, my footage folder, and then I have uh, subfolders within those for each camera roll. Now that I have uh, both the footage and my sound for that particular day, I'm going to go ahead and sync my media. So this isn't even, we haven't even gotten to the proxy creation process yet. At this point, we're, we're going to be syncing our media first. So ideally, the media folder that you just ingested contains a folder with all of your recorded sound and uh, folders for each camera roll. And if you're lucky, if the sound mixer in the first AC synced their timecode, Resolve's auto sync feature makes syncing media via timecode a super simple process. With my footage of my sound folder selected, I'm going to right click and select auto sync audio based on timecode. Now, for this particular project, I wasn't fortunate enough to actually have uh, my time code synced on my field recorder and on my camera. So I'm going to use uh, the second best option, which is auto syncing my audio based on waveform. Great. So now that I've synced my uh, sound and my footage files, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test just to make sure that everything worked. So let's take a listen. Here protect they, they protect the program enough that if they see somebody they feel it sounds good and if the uh the sync does not work for either time code or uh waveform um you're gonna have to sync manually and um that that is also an option available in resolve you can sync manually using your uh slate so now that everything is synced up, I'm going to go ahead and create a timeline. Now I'm going to create a timeline within Resolve for each of my camera rolls. So as you can see, I've got two camera rolls, uh, A1 and A2. This was a one camera shoot. And I'm going to create a timeline for each roll, starting with my first roll. And to do that, I'm going to select the roll. There's just one interview clip in this roll. I'm going to right click that clip, but normally you would just select all the clips within that role. You would right click those clips and you'll scroll up to create new timeline using selected clips. This is going to open a window here. And for me, I like to kind of leave a trail of breadcrumbs for whoever's going to be in my Resolve project later relinking media. Um, I'm going to name it exactly the same as my day's media folder and then I'm going to append it with uh, the name of the camera roll. Roll A1. Now there's one more thing you're going to want to do on this dialog box and that is to set the number of audio tracks and I only have two audio tracks um, so I'm going to plug in that value of two 
And ideally, though, you're going to want to set this value to whatever the maximum number of audio channels for any single clip in your role is. So for instance, if you have one clip within your role that has eight channels of synced audio, you're gonna to wanna to put uh, eight audio tracks on there. So just to make sure that the timeline actually pulls in all of that recorded audio. And audio track type, I just leave this as based on selected media. So with that information plugged in, I'm going to create my timeline and now I'm gonna hop over and add, uh, do an initial color grade on my clips. For the most part, um, if a LUT hasn't been provided to me by the, uh, by the camera team or DIT, um, I'll usually just throw on a, um, a log conversion LUT. Um, in this particular instance, I shot this with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So I'm going to right click on my node I'm going to go down to LUTs, 3D LUT, and I'm going to select Blackmagic Cinema Camera Film to Rec. 709. And that just gives me a little bit more color. It's obviously not the final grade, but it's better than just <laughs> having proxies that are just log. So now that I've colored my clips, I'm going to go back to my edit panel, and I'm going to export something called an ALE. And um, this particular file, an, an, a dot ALE stands for an Avid Log Exchange. And it's a type of file that allows easy transfer of metadata. I have just always learned that at this stage of the process, it's a good idea to go ahead and create your first ALE from your clips. Uh, so you have it. Um, so to do that, I'm going to click on my timeline thumbnail and I'm going to right click it, go to timelines, export ALE. So I've colored my clips, I've created, I've exported my ALE. Now it's time to actually deliver my proxies or set them up for export. So there are a couple of very important export settings um, that I'm going to, that I'm going to set here. First and foremost, I'm going to set a location for my proxies and I have a proxy folder within my edit drive and I'll hit save. I'm going to render out individual clips, not a single clip, very important here. And under the video tab, under format, I'm going to choose MXFOP Atom. Now this is a very important setting that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've selected here because if it's anything besides an MXFOP Atom uh, format, and you drop it directly into your Avid Media Files folder, um, it has to be this MXFOP Atom format or Avid's not gonna know what to do with it. And uh, this is a 1080p file, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose my codec as DNxHD. And my compression type, I've always just been very happy with this 145, uh, 120, 115, 8-bit compression. Um, it's a nice balance between uh, file size, playability, and quality. So on my video settings tab, everything's good to go. I'm gonna hop over to audio, linear PCM codec, that's great. Um, under audio channels, I'm gonna choose same as source. And then under file, I'm going to choose source name. Once again, we want the names of our proxy clips to match our original media. That way the relink process is nice and easy and everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add to my render queue. Now, if you remember, I've got one more roll, one more camera roll that I need to uh, that I need to prep for creating a proxy. So we're going to go back and we're going to do everything we've just done again for our second camera roll. So I'm going to hop to A2. I've got some B-roll clips in here. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to right click create a new timeline using selected clips and I'm going to name it that day's footage and append it with the appropriate camera roll name. Once again, I've got two audio channels here, so I'm going to uh, set the number of audio tracks to two and hit create. Now I'm going to go over to that timeline, make sure that everything came through all right. Now I'm going to add some color to my clips. I'm going to hop over to the color window 
I'm going to select all of my clips on that camera roll, right click, 3D LUT, and choose, choose a log conversion LUT. I'm going to hop back to my edit panel. I'm going to navigate to my timeline thumbnail, go to timelines, export, ALE. That's the exact name that I need. I am going to create a new subfolder within my ALE folder and hit save. ALE is saved. I've got an initial grade. Now it's time to push these out. So my export settings should have stayed the same, but let's just go through it one more time. Uh, here's the uh, location I want them to go in. Uh, we've chosen individual clips. Under the video tab, I've chosen MXF OP Atom as the format, DNX HD as my codec, and the compression at 145, 120, 115, 8-bit. Under the audio, linear PCM, yep, same as source, file. I want to use the source name here. Looks good. I'm going to add that to the render queue, and I'm going to select my renders and hit start render. Now I'm going to let these bake, and I'll come back to you in just a sec. Great, so... My proxy clips have finished rendering out of Resolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of Resolve. I'm going to open up two Finder windows. And in the top Finder window, I'm going to navigate to my uh, newly created proxies. And there they are in the MXF format. Perfect. And in my bottom window, I'm going to navigate to my Avid Media Files folder on my edit drive. I'm going to navigate to the MXF folder. I'm going to copy that over into my MXF1 folder and just let that transfer. All right, now this is where the magic happens. There are a couple of steps here that are very important. I like to rename the uh, MXF1 folder once I put my day's media into it. And I usually like to rename it uh, the date of that media's recording. For instance, this particular media was shot on July 11th, uh, 2018. So I'm going to rename that folder um, as such. Uh, notice I'm uh, naming this folder with numbers only. That's very important. Avid does not like it when you begin your MXF uh, folders with anything other than numerics. And now that I've renamed my folder to that shooting day, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select my two database files and I'm going to delete those. And I usually just like to empty the trash. Now that I have my proxy media inside my renamed MXF folder, it's safe to open up Avid Media Composer. Now in all of my Avid projects, I like to have an all media bin. This is the entry point for all of my media, no matter what it is. From this bin, I will organize it out into uh, other, other bins and folders. So because this is the first time I'm importing um, or bringing in this media, it's going to go straight into my all media bin first. So with my all media bin selected, I'm gonna right click, go down to input and import media. I'm gonna to navigate to my Avid Media Files folder, to my newly populated proxies, and I'm not gonna select the MXFs themselves. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to import this .mdb file and hit open. And there they are, those are my proxies. Those are my synced, color graded proxies that are ready to edit other fields, in Avid. Um, in other communities around Nairobi. And that's it guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for more Avid workflows and tutorials coming soon from premiumbeat.com. Mm -hmm.